All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a multicolor 3D print, specifically a coaster like this. Um, these are actually gonna be Christmas gifts. I've been printing up a storm with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. I've printed out this Lightbox Yoshi. It's really cool, multicolored print. I've been tinkering. I figured out how to make some multicolored prints. I'm gonna show you guys now. So let's jump right into it. Also, I just wanted to show off this Nutcracker print of Buddy from the Elf movie. This is a fantastic print. All right, let's get into it. So I'm gonna launch my vector drawing program. So I'm using Affinity Designer 2, but you could use Adobe Illustrator or freeware like Inkscape. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new page for these coasters. I'm gonna make them 95 millimeters wide. So that's what I'm gonna set my document size or canvas to and create. So there's my canvas. Because these are going to be round coasters, I'm going to draw a circle. And this is in a tutorial about how to use a vector drawing program. Uh, this is kind of showing you the steps on how to create an SVG that you can then use to make a 3D print. So the key thing, if you're going to take anything out of this, is you want to be able to get to an SVG format. So here's my circle. All of these drawing programs are very similar. So if you decide to do this, just do a little research on how to use these vector drawing programs. The colors don't really matter, but for now I'm just going to make it like, I'm going to make these coasters probably red so I can visualize it. I want maybe like a little banding around it. So I'm going to draw another circle, maybe something around that big, and I'm going to align it. I'm going to add a stroke to it, maybe something like that. Might be too much. I'm going to use a feature called expand stroke on that uh, on that stroke because an SVG won't recognize just a line. It needs to have some substance to it. So as you can see now, it's got two lines as opposed to one around that stroked out inner circle. So now I have two separate objects. So if I turn off this layer, it's all red. And if I turn off the red layer, it's black and white. Although my background is white, which I might change. I'm gonna change my background to be transparent. So from here, you could do anything you want in the center, but in the case of this coaster, as you saw earlier, it's uh, gonna be a cat. Uh, these are gonna be some gifts. I'm gonna go get an SVG of a cat. Now I have some SVGs of cats that I pre-purchased, and I kinda of like this one here. So I'm going to drag this one into Affinity and I'm going to resize it. Probably maybe something like that. And because this is an SVG, um, I need to be able to, I need to edit out these whiskers because the resolution is a little bit too low probably to, for these to print out properly. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to copy this as a curve and then I'm going to bring it into the other document. Now these steps might be slightly different if you're using Inkscape or if you're using Adobe Illustrator, but for Affinity, this is the this is how you can do it. Put it in as a different size. So I'm gonna get rid of the SVG. I don't really need it. I could keep it, but for this example, I'm not gonna bother. What I can do is if I use this node tool. As you can see on the cat, it's got all these nodes here. And I'm going to remove these nodes and get rid of these whiskers. I'm going to zoom in and just clean this up. Again, I'm not showing you how to use a vector drawing program. I'm just showing you that I want to get this to a state where I can use it. So you could just draw anything you want in here. I'm definitely not qualified to teach how to use a vector drawing program like Illustrator or Affinity. Okay, there, now the whiskers are gone. I think that looks pretty good. So for this coaster, I like it to be nice, nice and plain. So it's gonna really have only two colors. So now that we have the coaster like this, we have three objects. We have the base, we have this curve, and then we have the cat. Now there's a couple things you could do because if it's a really complex object, what you might need to do is like a Boolean operation where you subtract out all of these uh, objects from say the main body, which is the coaster. So the, the, 
the red coaster. So what I would do is I would highlight all the objects in ascending order. So from the cat to the curve, um, the outer rim, and then the coaster. And then I would use subtraction operation. These are generally called like a Boolean operation. And what that does is it removes out the cat, the circle from the red part, and then it makes it all one object. So you can see here like this. But you could also leave it like this and export this as an SVG and it should work. For this example, maybe I'll leave it all together and export it and see what happens. So I'm going to do file and I'm going to do export and I'm going to export as an SVG. Affinity has this bug in it that if you export it without changing some of these default settings, it doesn't resize properly when you import it into something like Fusion 360 or Tinkercad or Onshape. I'm going to change the DPI to 96. I'm going to export text as curves, although I don't have any text. I'm going to use relative coordinates and I'm going to flatten the transformations, even though I don't have any transformations really. Turn off set view box. These are the settings for that I found work. Otherwise, you're just going to have the imported object become the wrong size. So it won't be 95 millimeters when I import it. So I'm going to cat coaster 2. We're done with the affinity portion of this. We're going to hop over to Fusion 360 now. In here, I've created a new file. I'm going to create a sketch. So Fusion 360 free account uh, for personal use. Uh, you can also use Onshape. I found uh, Fusion 360 works a little bit better because there's no intermediary step. It recognizes SVGs natively, whereas in Onshape, you can import a DXF file, which is like a plotter or like a plasma cutter type of file or a laser cutter type of file. You would need to take your SVG, import it into something like Inkscape, convert it to a DXF file. I can bypass that with Fusion 360. I guess before that I should mention I, I'm creating a sketch. So if you haven't used Fusion 360, these are all very basic uh, functions. So I create a new sketch and I insert an SVG. So there's my cat coaster now. And as you can see, it's not in color, it's just the curves. Now I can just leave it set anywhere. This is fine. I'm going to click OK, finish sketch. And now I have all these individual objects that I can select. This is really powerful now what you can do because this is where the 3D modeling part comes in and the coloring part. Because I'm going to create a coaster, what I want to do is I want to make a coaster base because I don't want the color to go all the way through the coaster because that would take a long time to print. I'm going to do extrude and I'm going to select all the objects and I'm going to do negative three because I'm going to extrude downward from the sketch. So as you can see, it's added three millimeters down from the whole sketch of all the objects I've selected. Now I clicked OK. Now the sketch is gone. I want to turn that back on, but over on the left hand side on the browser. Now you can see that I've turned back on the sketch and I can highlight each individual section. I know that I want my outside ring and my inside ring to be red. So this, the base of the coaster is going to be red. So I'm going to leave that alone. So we're going to extrude this downward. We're going to remove material. So I'm going to do shortcut key E for extrude or the function up here under create extrude. And I'm going to select the cat and I'm going to select the ring and I'm going to do a negative one extrusion on this. And what this does, because we're extruding down into an existing object, it's going to change the operation to a cut. And it's important if it's not at cut, change it to cut. I'm going to select OK. You can see the material is removed. So now we have this whole base object that if we export it right now as an STL or a 3MF file, this would be just one object. What we're, we're going to do is we're going to add two more objects to this. So we're going to do an extrusion on the cat and the ring. So we're going to turn off the sketch because we don't want to extrude from the sketch. We want to extrude from the cat that we've removed and the ring that we have removed. So again, we're going to go back. We're going to hit E for extrude or the function again under create extrude. We're going to highlight the cat. We're going to highlight the ring. This is where you can either make it taller, which in the case of a coaster, you wouldn't want that, but you could technically, you could make it taller, but I'm going to make it the same level that we had removed. So I had removed uh, one millimeter. So I'm going to add back one millimeter. Now, what's interesting is you notice it's disappeared because the operation has turned to a join. Well, I'm going to change that from join 
to new body. And there it comes back. What I have now is when I click OK, is this is going to create three bodies. So when I come over to the browser on the left hand side here, I have the body. I'm going to rename this actually. I'm going to name this to Coaster Body. And this is important. Um, because when I import it into Bamboo Studio, it's nice to know these individual objects, especially if you have a lot of them. So this is going to be the cat in a ring. Okay, so I have three objects now. We have these objects that are all by themselves. So it's super important when you get to this step that under the bodies that if I were to turn off the coaster body, I should have a ring and a cat and they should be independent of each other. Now I want to have all the objects visible and they're all individual but stacked together. This is where it's really powerful with using Fusion 360 to do this. I'm going to do export. Make sure that you have the objects that you want to have exported visible. If you leave, like, say, the cat out, it won't get exported. I'm going to select type under my export feature, 3MF. Very important, not STL, 3MF. If you do STL, it'll combine, I believe, them all together, or they might export all separately, but they won't be tied together properly. I'm going to give it a name, Cat Coaster 2, and I'm going to click Export. Okay, now we're going to flip over to Bamboo Studio. So I have my Cat Coaster here that I created, and it's going to come up with this multi-part object detected. I'm going to select Yes. And what that does is it keeps all of those parts together. Now, right now it just looks green because my first color in my AMS is green, but we're gonna go in and fix that. I'm gonna come over under my process here. I'm gonna change over to the objects tab. And now you can see I have cat, coaster body, and inner ring. So the cat, I'm gonna recolor this filament color to red. Oops, sorry, not cat, I meant coaster body, but I'm going to change the cat to black. And then under coaster body, I'm going to change it to red. And then the inner ring, I'm going to change to black. And there we have it, our coaster in two different colors. Now what I could do is I wanted to, I could change that inner ring to say white. And you know what, I might actually change it to white. We'll have three colors in this print because I think that looks a little bit better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send it off to the printer. And I'm just going to leave it pretty much to the default settings. I think this will be fine. The last thing I am going to do now that I have it colored, I'm going to flip it over because I want the colors to print on the print bed because I think uh, it looks a little nicer than having it print on top. You could probably turn on ironing to help smooth it out. I've had mixed success with that. Highlight it and then I'm going to lay on face. And now it's laying face down on the bed. I'm going to now slice the plate and if I inspect the layers you can see that it's red for the base because the colors don't go all the way through and it's only one millimeter where all the color is. Now you can adjust that depending on the you know how bright your colors are or how opaque they are or how transparent. There we go. That'll be okay. Now I'm going to print plate and send it off to my Bamboo Lab printer. Yeah, I'll turn on the time lapse. Away we go. And right here I have a comparison of different print beds. The one on the left is your traditional textured PEI bed. In the center, I think, is this uh, textured kind of fancy PEO bed. And then this is like a smooth PEI sheet. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, what the different beds are like. Anyways, these prints came out beautiful. And these will make uh, really great uh, stocking stuffers or little gifts. The person that's going to get these uh, is a real cat lover. So I think they'll really like these. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Also, here's that Yoshi. My nephew is gonna love this. <laughs>